Let's talk about Britney Spears' memoir and how mentally ill women are constantly questioned even after they recover. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Britney Simon. In today's video, we're going to discuss Britney's new memoir. I've listened to it. I have cried over it. I have been held because of it. My partner literally had to hold me because I just started crying over my breakfast this morning listening to it. I finally finished it between yesterday and today, so it is fresh in my noggin, and I've got tons of notes in front of me. Uh, before we jump in though, hold on, I'm moving too fast here. I've got my tea today. It is a green tea. It is my normal basic green tea. It's so good. I love it so much. I got it in a local shop here in Croatia. Green tea is so good for you. So always I recommend green tea. Now talking about things that are good for you, Britney Spears' memoir. Now if you guys don't, okay, I'm going to cry. Oh my gosh. If you guys do not understand, <laughs> well, Britney Spears was having her journey all of us who grew up as millennials watching her, we were on our own timelines. So as Brittany is telling the story and as I'm listening to it, I'm like, I remember where I was. I remember watching that live on TV. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like Brittany and her life and what I was witnessing. And now as I'm listening to the memoir, I'm going back on the internet and watching all those reviews and watching all of those music concerts and realizing like, Oh, it's like the perception shifts. You have a bubble pop, right? We talk a lot about bubbles on this channel. We talk a lot about introspection and having a relationship with your consciousness. And without a doubt, this memoir is Britney Spears learning to have a relationship with her consciousness. And of course, we're along for the ride. You know, over the last few years, watching the Free Britney movement, feeling emotionally just overwhelmed by it personally, Britney Spears experienced one of my greatest fears, and I know a lot of you have similar fears, of being disregarded and trapped by the alleged people who love us the most. I think for people who grew up in complicated family situations, there is always that fear of not being seen. And you guys know that I think we're always partially seen by people until we're lucky enough to maybe meet that, that one person who can see us fully. So you're going to find that person in different ways. It could be a godparent, an auntie, an uncle. I personally feel like for Brittany, me, Brittany, the only person who could have ever seen me fully would have been a partner. Because for me, there's so much of an intimacy side to me that I obviously would want with a partner and not a family member, right? So for me, being seen fully also coincides with that side of me. And so I found that in my partner. And as many of you guys know, I moved countries to be with him. And at the same time, he is somebody who, because of who he is and the journey he was also on, it led him to being a person who could be with me. Our pathways crossed, in other words. And in Brittany's life, it feels as the memoir goes on that they're not, there isn't a lot of people whose pathways cross with hers in a way that is truly fulfilling. And I think that's what's so painful about listening to this memoir is that Brittany is still, I think, searching for that person. And I think she's maybe learning it's her, herself. You know, for some of us, it's not another person. It is the relationship we're having with our consciousness. We need to be seen by ourselves first before we can expect other people to see us. So by the end of the memoir, we really see that Brittany is still on the journey and we're here for her success. Now, as I'm reading the book, the things that I think we can take away for our life is the complicated nature of human relationships and our personal relationships, right? In a very serious way, people who claim to love us can damage us beyond repair or in hopefully a lot of our cases, we can still recover. And even if you recover, and this is why it is so important to form your own bubble, your own relationship with what you know is true, instead of listening to people who don't have your best interest in mind, because even the people who allegedly love us the most could be our worst enemies, right? Her family, her family. Who needs enemies when you've got a family like Britney Spears? And now I understand her dad has recently been sick and she's trying to repair that relationship, which I think is reasonable. But I also think it's necessary to recognize that this family has not had Britney's and, you know, best interest in mind. And if I'm going to be honest with you, as I was listening to relate it to my own life, I felt grateful for my family. Even though you guys know I suffer from borderline personality disorder and even though I'm in recovery, it is something that I have to maintain, right? In the 
if I'm put back in a bad environment, it could cause a possible trigger and I have to be careful. And so my family, even though I love them, when I'm around them, sometimes they can get overwhelming and you feel a little bit crazy because they're always people who love you but are always telling you who you are. They know you better than you know yourself kind of thing. Now, the difference between my family and Brittany's family is that my family would never have done the things that Brittany's family did to her. It was so clear as I'm listening to this story that neither her parents nor her sister had her best you know, interest at heart. And though I'm going to blame Jamie less because she is basically a child, her parents are clearly people that have never had Brittany's best interest at heart. Now, ironically enough, my own mother, who time and time again has proven she has my best interest at heart, even if she goes about it the wrong way sometimes, would never trap me. One of the things I've seen, by the way, my parents have handled my other siblings, nine of them, right? I'm, a, I'm one of 10, is that they would never trap us. One of the red flags I see in people is people who trap you, you know, and Brittany's family trapped her for her own safety, but not in the way you would keep a friend, you know, at your house because they're going through psychosis and you're watching them or a friend who's triggered and needs a safe space. Well, Brittany was triggered. They endlessly worked to trigger her more. They endlessly worked to make her life worse, not better. And so I think for me, this is a very important distinction as a mentally ill person who's biggest fear is being trapped in a facility or being taken away or my my rights being denied to me, right? One of my scariest, uh, one of the scariest things to me is having my children taken away and I'm not a mom, but that's why I work very hard to choose my partner very specifically. But I also have tools at my disposal that obviously Brittany growing up didn't have. As we move through the memoir, it is so clear to me that Brittany is stunted in a way that is so reasonable for her upbringing and she knows it. She even says so poetically that she feels like she was Benjamin Button and going back in time, she was like aging backwards. There's something that happens in children who are forced to grow faster than their their normal pace, right? And Brittany, a lot of responsibility was put on her. And even though she wanted to be a singer and performer, she never signed up to be the caretaker of her family. That was put on her. Now, my mother, going back to what I was going to say before, for all of her wrongdoings, did something very right for me. As she watched Britney Spears growing up, my mother would talk to me about Britney. You know, I had my Christina Aguilera album. I had my Britney Spears album. I had my NSYNC and Backstreet Boys albums growing up. And she would say to me, I wish Britney Spears' mother loved her enough to take her out of show business. And I never knew what my mother meant by that. My whole life growing up, my mother was so conservative. And so a part of me wanted to write her off as a queer kid, as a sex positive like person now, as a sex worker now. I always want to write my mom off because she's so religious. But my mom is always right 50% of the time. And she would say to me, these women in Hollywood don't want to do this. Like Britney Spears, like something's wrong with the way that her mom treats her. And I'm like, really? Like she seems happy and things seem okay. And it seems like these Hollywood actresses want to be exposed and want to have their bodies on display. And then you hear from all these women that, yes, some of them, like Britney, want to reclaim their sexuality and their body, but at their own discretion, within their own free will, right? Not because somebody is forcing them to do it. And yes, some of these Hollywood actresses want to do nude scenes, but not because they're forced to do it because of a contract, right? And so we're getting two different stories here. We're getting a yes, I want to do it, but I want to do it for me, which is why I, as a, as a content creator who does like OnlyFans work, because I love erotic art, I love the body, I just think like photography is so lovely. I want the right to do it on my own. I don't want to demand from an audience and I certainly don't want somebody to control how I display my body. So it's weird, I think, growing up in a home that you just want to get away from because you want to be free. But at the same time, that home I grew up in would never have put me in show business. My mom told me time and time again, as my friends around me were auditioning for girl and boy bands, were some of them in Hollywood, in movies, right? Some of the people I knew and grew up with did go to Hollywood, were a little in parts here and there in big movies, right? And I used to think like, I want to do that. I want to be Britney Spears. I want to do this. And then my mom would tell me like, no, you don't. As much as you think you do, you don't. And let me tell you, as a content creator that has no desire to be famous, it is because of stories like this. 
As I'm listening to Britney Spears' memoir, I'm reminded time and time again of why I do not want to be famous. It is so clear to me that it's so unhealthy. Britney didn't want to be famous. She wanted to be a performer. I want to be a YouTuber. I don't want to be famous. And it's really hard to explain to people that those two things are not the same thing because so many people want to be famous. I think Kim Kardashian is a really good example of this. And I think Britney Spears sort of talked about it in the beginning of the memoir where she says, you know, some people are really good at being famous. I think she used Jennifer Lopez as the example, but I, I think Kim Kardashian is incredibly good at being famous. She doesn't seem to be completely just overwhelmed by it. She seems to handle it relatively well versus I would, I would feel very overwhelmed. I just want peace. I want to meditate. I want to like live in a little like garden with a fountain and just, <sighs> and I think Brittany in so many ways, icon, just an icon. What an icon wants to perform. She wants to do her thing, but she, she was missing something in the way that she was raised because she was raised by bad parents who didn't give her foundation of values. You know, as I watch Cher interviews, and we love Cher, another icon, it is so clear to me that Cher knows her values. It is just so clear to me that Cher knows who she is. And I don't know Cher's parents, but I think if I remember correctly, she actually had a pretty good relationship with her mom, maybe. I could be wrong. But she definitely is one of those people that I see time and time again. Even right now, her Christmas album is popping. She knows her values. But Britney, God bless her, is just figuring that out. You know, in the whole memoir... She didn't talk much about values, but she expressed a desire to have a good and transparent and honest life. And I want that for her so badly. But Brittany didn't really talk about values, a foundation of belief she could go back to. Yes, she believes in God. And yes, she believes in prayer. But she always lived for other people. She said it time and time again in this memoir, I wanted to please other people. I wanted to make other people happy. It's why... So much of me is rebellious because all of those instincts I've have, all of those, how do I say this? All of the times growing up as a woman in certain bubbles, you're told to please people and to make people feel comfortable. I have to fight that in moments because a lot of the time people want you to do that to not rock the boat, but it also is at the sacrifice of your own consciousness. So here's Brittany being thrust into this universe where part of her wants to be a performer, which is valid and beautiful, but also the consequence of that, the payment she had to pay was to sort of be a slave. Like, you know what I mean? And not a fun slave, like slave for you, slave. Okay. A slave to the paparazzi, to her parents, to the abuse at the, at the hands of everyone who misconstrued her stories. And it's just a nice reminder that you don't have to want this kind of life. Not even Britney Spears wants it. She doesn't want the fame. She doesn't want the paparazzi. She wants the music and the performance, which is the purity of it. It's the purity of what she wants for her life. She wants to be a good mom and a good friend. And I think over the years, she has proven to be in the capacity she could be, right? Let me tell you, as a person with borderline personality disorder, which is often completely misunderstood in the media and completely misunderstood in movies and completely misunderstood even online in spaces where people go, oh, we're mentally, you know, where we know about mental health, but they don't understand mental health. They don't understand how borderlines can recover very quickly in therapy if given the tools. They don't understand that borderline is often an illness or a a personality disorder, you end up occurring as a child. So again, you're just victim blaming children, which is ironic, right? They don't understand that borderline is something that you can recover from in a really significant way. I'm in the maintenance stage of it myself. So it still exists within me. I still have some emotional uh, regulation issues, but DBT really helps. And I haven't had a splitting trigger in almost four years, about four years now, which is pretty amazing. I'm doing really well. I've married recently. I found a partner who understands me. I've also found a partner, which this is very specifically important in relation to Brittany, who would never lock me away and never take away my children. And even in a divorce, we are going to respect each other as a consciousness because our philosophy on life is very similar because our values overlap. 
One of the things I saw consistently in the memoir was Brittany was choosing men from Justin to Sam who did not seem to share values. It just seemed to share a moment in time, which is so reasonable, again, for the way that she was raised and the things she was forced to do. She never got a chance to form her values. Never got a chance to ask herself, what do I want? What do I believe? And how do I express that to people, right? How do I express it to myself, this thing that I so desperately need? But what is it you need if you don't know your values? Now, again, one of the reasons I chose my partner is because of his strong stance and his values. His, I knew that if things went wrong, if I was ever mentally ill to the point where I needed help, he would do the right thing. I'm so terrified of postpartum depression that honestly, I'm very much considering not having biological children. And Brittany's story of experiencing postpartum depression, which led to some of the most infamous paparazzi shoots we've ever seen, where Brittany was breaking down and people were making fun of her. And I was like, something is wrong. When I see people suffering so loudly, it's amazing to me that people just assume, oh, they're being a Karen. Oh, they're being rude. Oh, they're being, they're literally obviously unwell. And the world is not mentally health aware because we want mental health to be packaged so prettily where everything is convenient for the person, not going through it, but the people around them. We are so judgmental of the mentally ill because we just don't understand it. And I can't blame you. Sometimes people who are mentally ill will use their illness as an excuse to do bad behavior. And that's a problem. But also, people who aren't mentally ill also do a lot of behavior that is bad and use excuses to like to do it. So again, it's not the mental illness that makes you bad. It's your character. Lots of people without mental illness have bad characters and do lots of bad things to other people, right? So the irony is that the people without the mental illness will blame people's mental illness for their bad behavior, but won't look in the mirror and say, like, you're doing it and you're not even mentally ill, sir. So just a reminder, right? Now, with that said, Brittany is obviously a person who didn't have the tools to stand up for herself. When Justin Timberlake and her were a couple, which I was shocked to find out she lost her virginity at 14, but you know what? Kind of makes sense with the way she grew up in the South. So different, Brittany's bubble where she came from, right? So different. And it changed the moment her mother decided to use her as a tool to, I think, reach fame, in my opinion, because again, my, my parents are immigrants. They could never spend the amount of time and effort Brittany's parents did or mom did because her dad was an alcoholic and useless, not because he was an alcoholic, but because he, he chose to be useless regardless of his illness because alcoholism is a disease, okay? But her dad in particular chose to be specifically useless in a way, not just because, okay, we saw that later with his conservatorship. I'm not trying to like, people have problems, okay? So, Brittany's mom taking her from place to place, traveling states, taking her to these auditions, like my mother would never. Well, also because my mother's values wouldn't let her, right? She's Catholic. She would never let her child go and perform half naked or be used by Hollywood. And I'm sex positive now. So Britney Spears, be half naked girl, rock your body girl, do your thing, right? But I could understand from the difference in how we were raised, how that could impact you. I want to make it clear to people why it's so important to have parents that are together to the best of your ability, you know, to have parents that are healthy and to make sure you don't parentify your child. You know, Britney Spears was made to pay her parents' bills. I've never had to do that, right? My parents are still together. Her parents are certainly divorced and she's been with many people at this point. Britney's also suffered from not having a good, healthy relationship, you know, as displayed in, in front of her to learn from. It's obviously showing, right? I don't know how many studies have to be done, how many things have to be done where, look, divorce for your, you know, divorce is not great. If you have to do it, do it, of course, but it's not great. It really does shatter the illusion and the foundation of understanding you have within yourself and your children. And often if a divorce is happening, something has gone wrong. Sometimes that's not the case, but that's pretty rare, right? I don't think many people get married thinking they're going to get divorced, which means something has gone wrong. Now, with that said, I'm glad Brittany's gotten divorced and I hope she stays single slash figures out her values before she dates again because I think it would help. But it's not her fault she doesn't have them. Her parents don't have them either. And parents are the people who usually give you your values. 
or you have to do the work like I did and go search out and find them. But to be honest with you, my parents gave me a pretty good starting point. So I had an advantage Brittany didn't. Even though I don't have as much money as Brittany or I'm not as famous, I am way better off than Brittany ever could have been because my foundation was way better. My parents are together, like I said. They certainly didn't yell at each other or keep us up at night. They certainly didn't make their problems our problems. And I certainly never paid my parents' bills. So just with that alone, for all the mistakes my parents have made as parents, because no one is perfect, and none of you will be perfect parents. Some of all of you will make mistakes, right? That's just the reality of it, right? My parents were still better off than Britney's. And even though I have borderline personality disorder, so my parents didn't do everything right, right? They are the ones, they are the reason I have it, okay? They are still better off than Britney's. And so in that way, we need to be aware that even though you're looking at Britney as the famous Britney Spears girl, she was also the little girl that was basically emotionally abused and taken advantage of her whole life by the same people that were supposed to protect her. So it's very important for us as we look at the rich and the famous and remember that they are struggling, that being rich or famous is not a guarantee for joy. And I want us to all have joy. I want us to have joy, 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 okay? Britney Spears was with Justin Timberlake. Loses her virginity at 14, but according to the news, at 17 to Justin Timberlake. I thought that, you thought that, we all thought they definitely were each other's firsts. Nope. The media lies. Just like we've been covering on my live streams, we've been covering how YouTubers twist narratives and sell you a product. That's just what the audience wants, period, okay? The audience wants a story that they find interesting. And Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake losing their virginity to each other would be interesting. But here is Britney choosing this man who obviously they were young. They were innocent in so many ways. They were never going to be each other's forever. Let's be real. But I could see why Britney thought they would have been. I think the world would have loved that. And I think the world would have loved a little baby from Britney and Justin. But the truth is, in that moment, they made a decision that Britney herself admits she wouldn't have made if she was on her own. And they chose to abort that baby. And I like that Britney highlighted how horrible abortion is on a woman's body. Because as much as I'm pro-choice, and I am, spiritually, I know how damaging it is to end a life, whether it's through war or abortion, right? And I know how important it is to celebrate life, whether it's you're pregnant for a week or a day or a month. Or you have that baby out at the hospital and that's when you celebrate it. Either way, I think you and I can acknowledge that later in life when Britney Spears had her miscarriage, it was sad. And years before, unknowingly, when Britney Spears had her, her abortion, it was sad. A life that was on its way ended. Right? One on accident, the miscarriage. And one on purpose. From the hands of her, the baby's own parents. And I think that that's just the harsh reality of accepting the choices we make in life. And I'm saying that it is so sad, but I understand why it's sometimes necessary for people. But in that moment, she didn't really make the choice. It was Justin. And then it was her choice to people please. Again, why people pleasing can be so damaging. You can people please to a point where you end the life of your own child. And again, I don't want the pro-lifers to be like, Brittany Simon is very pro-life. I am pro-life spiritually. Obviously, I'm anti-war, anti-the death penalty. I'm anti, like, I don't think we should be doing these things. I understand why they're necessary in quotations. But obviously, spiritually, we shouldn't be ending life. And at the same time, I am pro-choice. I think people have the right to do what they need to do with their own bodies. I think medically, sometimes you have to have an abortion for the health of the mother. I strongly believe this. So don't take me out of context, pro-lifers, Okay. And I used to be pro-life, so I understand where you're coming from. But pro-lifers are also traditionally pro-death penalty and war, so I don't want to hear it from you guys either. Okay? There's no consistency, but I understand. I do, because humans are going to human, and we're all in bubbles, and we all do what's what we're capable of and what we can do. We all try our best, just like Brittany is trying her best in this book. It's so good. I really recommend it. I just can't. It made me so emotional. It's so good. So Brittany Spears from a young age, is parentified, forced into situations that, one, get her what she wants because she wants to sing, but at what consequence? As the story continues, there's a part way later in the book where she talks about her um, conservatorship, and she says, if I play nice, I, at least I can see my kids. I will do that for my children. I will sign away my freedom for the sake of my children. There's so much sacrifice that Brittany is making, and I want to encourage you guys to understand that sacrifice what it leads to your joy is good. Sacrifice 
when it leads to your destruction, it's not sacrifice, it's self-harm. And in this instance, I think Brittany did the best she could do in a survival situation. But often in life, I just want to remind you guys that sacrificing your happiness and joy for other people, when it does not lead you to your joy, it does not give you peace, it's just self-harm. So in philosophy, when we talk about the sacrifice leading to joy, we think about discipline in relation to values. And because Britney Spears had no values, she couldn't be disciplined in her sacrifice. She was just self-harming, right? Throughout the book, I think the thing that was, again, so painful is knowing that in my real life, in Britney's, my Britney's real life, I was growing up as this young girl. I was about 12 years old in 2001. And I remember when Brittany did uh, Overprotected, and I remember how that changed my life. I remember being a little girl, watching this music video, watching specifically, I think, the remix where she's dancing in the rain, watching this music video and thinking to myself, like, this, this says something. This means something to me. I feel so trapped in my home as a queer kid. I feel so trapped because I want to be out here. I want to I wanna own myself, and I want to be free. And at the same time, Britney Spears is a much older person, not much older, but you know, is having the same experience, but in her own way. And because of her family in the media and everything else, we are all living our own version of life on the same timeline, but completely different paths, right? And it's amazing when you compare where you were, when they were there and where you, and you're sitting here like, oh my gosh, there was even a moment way before Britney uh, did me against the music with Madonna where she met Madonna at a party and she was like, oh my God, I'm with Madonna and all these cool people. There is an illusion we get as people watching famous people who are at parties together as if these famous people aren't just high schoolers with money. Remember life is high school with money. So every time you see these celebrities with each other and you think like, oh, they've made it in that moment when Britney Spears first meets Madonna, she hasn't made it yet. When Britney Spears actually years later goes to Madonna and says, do you want to do, uh, you know, me against the music with me? And by the way, great song, classic. And in that moment, Britney's asking Madonna and Madonna's like, yeah, Britney wasn't sure if Madonna would say yes, because Britney Spears is an icon to us. But Madonna's an icon in her own right, of course, like icon. Even Britney in that moment is like feeling vulnerable, is saying, oh, my gosh, is Madonna going to say yes to me? The idea of stars making it as if anything they request will be, you know, they'll get a yes. There is a chance you could get a no, even when you're a top celebrity, because you're just a person. Everyone is just people doing people things. And then behind the scenes, there's all this corruption and manipulation and the tabloids. So much of what contributed to Britney Spears' decline was on the backs of hundreds of people from paparazzi to her family to agents to everything to doctors and this is my greatest fear that we're living in a bubble or community or society that is so without values so unethical because they don't even understand how this could happen to them that they don't care when it happens to other people Now, the golden rule is a little complicated. We want to, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. But in a more nuanced way, you need to treat people the way they need to be treated. And most people need to be treated with dignity. I would argue all people need to be treated with dignity for the sake of you and your conscience and for the sake of theirs. The consciousness that you are should want to treat people with dignity. And so many people treated Britney Spears without dignity. I think one of the most beautiful moments in the book is when Brittany's at the mental hospital, very close to her getting her happy ending and the conservatorship is happening. She's in Beverly Hills and a nurse shows her on the computer screen the free Brittany protesters. And it's like such a beautiful moment, right? Because I remember when that was happening and a lot of people did want me to talk about it, but I just couldn't because I am... So like I, of course, supported people and like tweets and all that stuff. But I am so even now it is like my biggest fear, which she went through. It's my it's my personal nightmare. Being disregarded, being trapped, being held hostage by the people who allegedly love you the most. And no one can do anything about it. 
until Britney Spears herself finally decided, I'm going to do something about this. Now, Britney Spears throughout the book made it clear that she is incredibly naive. And I feel like it inspired me to remember why I make the work that I do, because I wish I don't know how it ended up being this way. But Britney knew less about her own legal rights than I feel like I know about mine. And I'm like, how did that happen? And it happened because as a child, she was thrust into a position of isolation. She wasn't reading thousands of books. She wasn't watching tons of content. She's older, so she certainly didn't have YouTube. She wasn't exactly Googling everything. She was dealing with fame, which is such a suffocating bubble. It doesn't always give you a lot of time to really know you and your rights and who you are and your consciousness. She was dealing with so much family trauma. Even the stories about her grandparents, oh my gosh, so much generational trauma. Britney Spears in so many ways was so limited. And I think for me as a content creator, again, who does not want fame, I do want to help people gain the tools to not get stuck in situations like this. And I think because it's one of my biggest fears, I'm very cautious about making it clear to people that I will seek recovery, I will get better, and I will make it clear you do not have the right to imprison me, right? But Britney Spears' own parents found a way to basically trick their daughter into not knowing that for 13 years she could have sought her own counsel, that she could have gotten the help she needed. And the moment she did, the moment she got the right lawyer, they played the game correctly within the court systems and she won her freedom. Now, that doesn't mean that Britney Spears is like fully in recovery and everything's peachy. She has many years ahead of her of working on her introspection and self-growth. Many years ahead of her of figuring out how do I have a relationship with my consciousness? Truly, how do I understand myself as a person? How do I even learn to know like what I want? This will be a very difficult journey, but it's so much more possible now. And I think even for me, I got this like reinvigoration about my own work where I really just want to help people get themselves in control of their lives in a very foundational value spiritual way, like very foundational in your core. So when people come to you and say, I know this about you, you can say, well, hold on. I'll take it into consideration, but let me see the evidence. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, like, that's not true. I know why you might think that because your vision is skewed, but if you look at the evidence, it's not true. So wishing you well, but absolutely not. It's about making sure that you see yourself so clearly, even through your own brain's desire to protect itself, that one, you can hold yourself accountable. So when you do make a mistake, you can change. And two, it's so you do not become confused when people try to confuse you. One thing I appreciate about Brittany is she is so self-aware. She admits to her mistakes. She's very kind to people. Brittany is so kind throughout this memoir. Her, her specific kindness to her sister while owning and calling her sister out was beautiful, poetic. Her kindness towards, towards Kevin Federline was really outstanding because to be honest with you, I, 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 it shook me. It just shook me the way Kevin has treated her over the years. I've always disliked it about him. The way he's tried to convince the media that he's been this perfect person when obviously that's not true. The way he's tried to do whatever he's tried to do. The way she spoke about him was incredibly respectful, incredibly thoughtful. And I just think it just shows what a bigger person she is. She has such a good sense of character. You can just tell that Brittany has such a good sense of character. I appreciated the way she talked about Paris Hilton and even Christina and other people in her life. She was honest, but she wasn't cruel. And I think that just takes such a, such a level of maturity. And I think she was honest. You know, I think the most disappointing story was the one with her and her mother. I had such high hopes that her and her mother would bond together and be on each other's side. But it was clear that her own mother and father had so much trauma, generational trauma, that they hadn't gotten help for, that they lost themselves in the sauce. And it's so sad, but it is not Brittany's responsibility to save her family. They have to want to save themselves. Introspection, the work that I do, really you have to fundamentally understand to find your joy, you have to need your joy. 
and not enough people in the world really need it, most people are okay with just floating by. Look at the way her own father treated her. My father would never. My father would never. One of the greatest pieces of advice my father gave me, he sat me down and said, listen to me. I love you. And I was like, I love you. And he goes, listen to me. If you ever become rich, if you ever win the lottery, don't tell anyone. Don't even tell me. He goes, money changes people and they will treat you differently. He goes, you will know who to trust in your life. Okay. Learn that first before you tell people you have money, if you have to tell them at all. But specifically, don't ever feel obligated to save your family like us. We got it. We're adults. We can handle it. Don't feel obligated to sacrifice your joy and happiness for your family. But make sure that if your joy coincides with your sacrifice, then it's okay. Because they're Catholic, so they believe in sacrifice. But only if it gets you closer to Christ, which if you translate to secularism, closer to your joy. Right? Because Christ is joy for the Catholics. So my own father, that's the way he looked out for me. Don't ever let anyone use you for your money, not even me. He's tell- he's warning me. And I haven't become rich yet, so not a problem yet. But Brittany, her father not only took control of her money, paid himself more than he even paid her, but convinced the world his own daughter was incapable of making her own choices while he used her as slave labor to perform and make money for him. So the mother writes a memoir, goes on tour, and says, all three of my children have problems. Jamie had a child as a teenager. My my son is just a little confused. I don't know what happened exactly with Brian. And Brittany, well, you know Brittany. All three of my children have problems. I certainly don't know why. Hmm. Three kids, same parents, And we don't know why all three kids ended up with problems. Now, to be fair, that's very normal for most parents to deny that they did any harm to their children. Brittany specifically owns the way she was a bad mother at times to her children. And I really respect that. I think as millennials, hopefully, who are trying to break generational curses, we are well aware that we will make mistakes as parents. We will not be perfect. And we know because we watched our parents be imperfect. And one of the most difficult things for parents seemingly to admit is that at times they were bad parents. I don't know why it's so hard because we've heard our whole life to take accountability and maybe that's just the bubble shift and cultural shift throughout the generations. I'm not sure. But Brittany's parents, her mother specifically, couldn't imagine why all three of her kids seemed to suffer. Look in a mirror, Habibi, look in a mirror. Now, my parents, for the most part, still have a hard time facing the fact that they weren't the greatest parents at all times, but over the years have definitely made amends and apologized. And I appreciate that. Now, the apology is a very Middle Eastern apology, so it's not exactly as perfect as it could be, but nobody is perfect, but I see it in the way that they treat me. I see it in the way that they act. And again, my parents have very strict values, so they're not going to, you know, move straight away from those. But they love me unconditionally and I see that. I know my parents love me unconditionally because my parents are the first people to defend me to people who want to talk crap. I love that about them. And even though they'll lecture me in private, they would never let other people do it. They're like, no, no, no. That's my daughter. Don't you talk crap on my daughter who's a grown woman. And then in private, they're like, stop doing OnlyFans. But, you know, at the end of the day, they know I'm a free spirit. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. They still love me. I still talk to my parents all the time. I call my mom almost every day. I love my family. It's it's so clear to me they love me unconditionally. And my heart goes out to Brittany for I've never for never having experienced that from her own family. My heart breaks for her. And in the and you know by the end of the book she says I needed my peace and that meant not talking to my family. And I think that's really important. Here on this channel, we talk often about building bridges with your family, reconnecting with your very, you know, different family, loving them regardless of their faults. And I think for a lot of us, that's possible. But for some people, it's not. Now, you guys know I've also taken long breaks from my family. You know, I went away for like five years and didn't talk to my family. And other siblings have done that as well. And I think that could just be the stage Brittany's at. Maybe she just needs space. But also, for her own sake, I think it's important that she does do whatever she needs to do on her own terms in regards to staying away or rekindling her relationship with her family. Because 
I know that in the news her dad is sick and so she went to maybe go see him or maybe there was some story. I don't know who knows at this point if I can trust any of the headlines, which we've seen in this memoir. We can't. But that's okay. If Britney wants to do that on her own time, she should. And if Britney doesn't want to, she shouldn't have to. It's about choice. Let her choose. Leave Britney alone. Chris Crocker was right. Leave Britney alone. Leave her alone. Even recently in the news, I put on Twitter, you know, Britney Spears was doing the Shakira dance with the knives. Obviously, it was prop knives. Obviously, it was the Shakira dance. People still had the audacity to call 911 and have cops check on her. The world will, they won't learn at the, at the, at a fast enough pace, but they will learn eventually. They were prop knives. She was fine. She was just imitating Shakira. Leave Britney alone. Leave her alone. You have no right to say you care about Britney unless you read this me memoir. If I see any people criticizing Britney or tweeting at Britney or saying like Britney's mental health, someone needs to help her and you have not read this memoir, I don't cancel it. I don't want to hear you say you care about Britney's mental health and you don't even listen to her. Listen to this woman tell you who she is because she's the number one person who knows. Listen to her. She's been asking and begging for the world to listen to her. And if you don't, I will just disregard you the same way you disregard her, right? Okay, now, in relation to your life, my life, our life, this could happen to you on a smaller scale. This is happening to someone right now who isn't rich and famous. This is happening to somebody who's just the average Joe. And that is why in life, we have to very, be very cautious and aware of the people we bring into our lives. One of the reasons I'm so strict about who we marry is because look at the people who will discount you the moment they put you in a situation to trigger you, the moment they're the ones who have been gaslighting you, the moment they've been the ones who have been cheating or lying to you, and then they'll blame it on, oh, well, you made me do it. Look how crazy you've been. Look how unstable you are. Every time they put their partners in situations to basically go off, they're the first people to go, oh, look how crazy my partner is. Look how crazy my... Don't trust people who are the first people to talk shit on you. Could you imagine being in a partnership and the first person who goes for your neck is your partner? That's different than disagreeing with your partner publicly, holding them accountable, having a debate or a discussion with your partner. That's different than somebody who's constantly throwing their partner under the bus. Listen for the details of the people in your life and see how much they throw you under the bus the moment it's convenient for them. Friends, family, partnerships, business partners. There are some people in the world that will throw you under the bus. Pay attention. And know the difference between throwing you under the bus and speaking their truth. Plenty of friends I have are divorced and we disagree on things and we have discussions and debates, but we do not throw each other under the bus. There's a difference between saying like, oh yeah, my... My friend believes this and I think that's kind of crazy, but you know, that's their belief and I can understand how they got there versus, oh my God, did you hear? Did you hear? Ew, they cannot be trusted. Like, I, oh my God. There's a difference between making people doubt someone's sanity so it benefits you and just saying like, oh yeah, we're different. We have different beliefs, but hey, everyone's going to live their own way. In Britney Spears' case and in many cases that happen to us all over the world, People try to convince other people you can't be trusted when they are the person with the malicious plan behind the scenes. It is the most evil thing about being a human being, I think, whatever evil means when it's all a construct and everyone's just doing what they think is right, to maliciously intend to skew reality so outside of someone's favor and only in yours that you destroy the sanity of a person. It is so beyond cruel to destroy this, the sanity of a person. It is, it is so beyond cruel. It is one of the worst offenses to emotionally and verbally abuse somebody to such a capacity that they gaslight themselves on a constant basis because they have lost their sense of foundation. It is why 
I work so hard, especially in my work, to try to bring people back to a foundation or to create one for themselves. So many people are people pleasing out here. For people who never had your best intention in mind, people who want you to grow will encourage you to go towards your joy. They will teach you to be disciplined and to sacrifice only if it helps you reach your joy. If they are encouraging you to sacrifice in quotation marks and that leads you to self-harming, it is not the same thing. Okay, be very careful of people who claim to have your best intention in mind and you do not see yourself actually becoming more joyful, having a sense of peace. We're talking about an inner sense of peace. That is where your goal is, joy. Not, oh, look at me, I've got muscles now, so I must be better. Are you also panicking over body dysmorphia and freaking out that you're not cool enough or freaking out you don't have the right Bugatti or freaking out? A sense of peace? is being joyful to just breathe and feel safe. We want to get people to the point of being able to breathe and feel safe. A relief that you can let go and relax because no one's going to come and get you. That is the goal, right? Okay, let me look at my notes. So many notes. Oh my gosh. This is also why I'm so anti-group activities. Because in group activities, there's always a hierarchy and people will, they'll just naturally, if they're not good with their values, if they don't have a strong foundation, they will throw you under the best, whether they mean to or not. And I think there's something to be said about that. Brittany was obviously overworked. Obviously, the irony is that they said she wasn't capable of taking care of herself, but she could perform and make them money. Justin Timberlake obviously has to work on himself. Men, Kevin Federline should work on himself as per usual, just as Brittany is working on herself. You know what I mean? Um, Jamie Lynn Spears got to work on herself. Oh, one of my favorite stories was her and Colin Farrell just going at it and having spicy sex, but specifically her going to his movie premiere in a PJ top. I Googled it. It looked fly. Honestly, she pulled it off. She literally pulled it off. I am not upset about it. I loved that part. Me Against the Music with Madonna, classic icon. Oh, her music is so iconic. Britney's never done, oh, she's never done anything bad. I love her music. It's so good. Yeah, leave Britney alone. She she is working on herself and finding herself and her sense of peace, I think, is going to be facilitated by having really well-intentioned people around her, which doesn't include her family, right? Obviously. Or the paparazzi or the news. How dare they? How dare they abuse this woman? How dare the media abuse this woman? Oh, fame isn't real. You know, she talked about that. And that's what, again, we've been talking a lot about on this channel. Like fame and the product and the brand, they are selling you something. Even YouTubers are selling you something. Like I always say, this table doesn't belong here. This this dresser here is only here because it adds to the like atmosphere. It actually lives over there across the room. It's very inconvenient here. It blocks my wardrobe. Even I, who am trying to be authentic as much as possible, am also curating a space that isn't real. My real life off the internet, that does not belong there. This dresser should not be here. And that's what I'm trying to say. It can be something innocent, like moving a dresser, or it can be something malicious, like misconstruing someone's whole life at the expense of the movie star or celebrity for the sake of the audience, like they did with Britney. And like I said, for Kim Kardashian and other people, they handle it well. But I think that Kim probably handles it well because there's something about her that loves the game. And Britney Spears kept saying, I'm not good at this game. And girl, mean either. I could never. I could never. I just think my mental health would decline. I would be so unhappy being that famous. So good for Brittany for finally getting her freedom and owning that. And I hope she just continues to find her peace and her joy. And like I said, it will be years in the making. It takes years to heal trauma, if not a lifetime. But I am rooting for her. I'm so excited for her. And without a doubt, she is an icon and always will be an icon. She's a real person. Like a real consciousness in the world. And to some people, she's just some girl who wrote a song. But she's like a real person. 
Yeah, I think in our lifetime, she's probably one of the most objectified and dehumanized celebrities of our time. And it destroyed her. But not enough that she couldn't pick up the pieces. So rooting for Britney Spears and rooting for her joy. I just cannot, I'm sorry, I cannot believe how cruel people have been to this woman. From the moment she came into the world until now. The world does not deserve Britney Spears. We do not deserve this icon. She's an icon and we do not deserve her. Those are my final words. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. Have a great day. And please, please treat yourself better and treat other people better. Be kind and compassionate. Be open, but have boundaries. Try to be healthy, happy, and kind. Create whatever mantra, prayer, ritual you need to aim towards your joy, and to stay there. (sighs) Okay. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool